In one of our prior videos, we went over the DeWalt Power Detect DCD998 and put it up against the DeWalt FlexVolt Advantage DCD999. Both these drills have insane power and we realized a lot of things about them. Putting the flex volt up against the larger 8 amp hour battery, we learned that the power detect didn't really get a lot from the flex volt, but it did get a lot from the larger 20 volt batteries. The flex volt advantage took advantage of, seemed like, the 5 amp hour battery and the 8 amp hour battery and the flex volt advantage. So the, what we walked away with was that the flex volt advantage seemed to take more power away from all the batteries throughout the range where the power detect really didn't. What we're gonna do today is compare these two drills on one five amp hour battery, try to prove with more definitive answers if the flexible advantage does take more advantage of the smaller batteries that you would use on these drills every day. We're gonna go through a lot of different testing. Stick with us. Before we get to drilling, I wanna very quickly recap what we've seen in some of the other FlexVolt Advantage tools. The FlexVolt Advantage circular saw was an easy one. If you have a FlexVolt battery, buy the FlexVolt circular saw. We showed how much more power the FlexVolt circular saw has over the FlexVolt Advantage circular saw, and it just made sense. Go to the FlexVolt. When we looked at the angle grinder, we compared the FlexVolt Advantage angle grinder to the FlexVolt angle grinder. The FlexVolt angle grinder is large, super powerful, and the FlexVolt Advantage had a good amount of power, especially with a FlexVolt battery, but was smaller. So that was one tool I could see for smaller uses that you could get into in the FlexVolt Advantage line and have something that complemented a FlexVolt tool. Here, both of these are 20 volt drills. So it's really hard for someone to justify putting a FlexVolt battery on the bottom of this drill because it becomes so large. It's the same way with this power detect. You put a six or an eight amp hour battery on here, you have a really large drill. So the reason why we're doing this is because we proved that both of these have insane power in the last video and the reality is this five amp hour battery is what 99% of everyone are gonna use on these drills. So let's see if either one of these has more power with a five amp hour battery. And what we're gonna do in this test, same battery. I understand that the one before might have just you know a tenth of a volt more than, than the one that goes later. It just, I, if I have two different batteries, both fully charged, one battery pack might be better than the other. You, we could go on, with, on and on with craziness. I'm still using two by lumber. Yeah, there's gonna be some differences in the lumber. I'm gonna to try to keep it more steady this time. I could see in the last uh, video, we had some issues with the wood moving and maybe causing some of the discrepancies. We're going to work through it. We're going to use the same drill bits again. It's going to be smaller drill bits, so there should be less of an effect. We're going to be fair. Stick with us. Let's get to drill. All right, five amp hour battery, fully charged. At this point in time, we're going to start out with a three quarter inch spade bit. Makes completely sense here. We're just going to do some drilling. Speed three, drill mode. This should be no issue. None whatsoever. Move it over to the flex volt advantage. Again, no issue. So put this back on the power detect, one inch spade bit. Due to the power we had before, seems like a no-brainer here, but let's give it a try. Struggled slightly, you could hear it. I don't think that that's gonna be where it's gonna end. This is going to be pretty easy. Move up to the inch and a quarter. I'm gonna guess that this is going to be approximately where we're gonna to start to see some slowdowns. Still on level three. Nope, 
We got a little bit of stuff in this bit, inch and a quarter. Let's do another one on that. That's definitely not the drill. No issue here. This drill bit is uh, getting plugged up with wood on the end, which if we're having trouble with this one and this is where we're gonna stick, we will substitute it with a different drill bit. Here we go. For whatever reason, this dude is not so thrilled when we get to the end. Let's move over to an inch and a half spade bit on the power detect. Per the drill here, we it showed two, two bars when we first pushed the button. It's at three. So we're dropping down slightly in power. So what to do after that? Still at three bars. While an inch and a quarter spade bit up to an inch and a half is a big deal. Let's see if the flex volt advantage can take it through in level three. We'll go right next to it. It definitely got further by a long shot. So we're in almost three quarters of an inch. Let's try one more. Didn't go. Try one more. We're in deeper that time by a good amount. So let's switch back over and see about consistency with the power detect. Now, obviously the battery is down slightly. We're at two bars at this point, but this was our last hole. It was fairly deep. Let's try it here. So we are getting deeper in some places than others, but we definitely didn't get anywhere near as deep as we did with the flex volt advantage, even in that place. I'm going to go grab a bit that is in between the inch and a half and inch and a quarter, and we're going to go in a different area and just test them out. All right, we grabbed a one and three eighths inch spade bit. We're putting it in the power detect, same battery says three bars, was at two prior. I moved the board over so it was a little bit more stable. Let's give her a try. No issue. Let's just try it in the flex volt advantage to see what we get. We get a cutout. That's legit. We get, uh, we're closer to a knot. And I was definitely pushing on that one because of how it, the self feed did not grab. Let's give it one more try. And again, we have smoke because of the self feed bit. Take a look at it. See how it's getting full of uh, sap. Interesting. Well, with where we're at in this bit, let's put it in the power detect and see what happens. It's definitely burning on the end and I'm having to push it through. So this bit is not gonna tell us anything. Same result. Same result. Did clean off the bit slightly. While we're here, let's just try this auger. Power detect with the auger, level three. Did slow it. Let's move over and try this with the flex bolt advantage. Got a 
go the right way. So in order to kind of stall it like the other one, I am pushing. It's a little warm, so interesting when you go back and forth because when I really look at some of these tests, the flexible advantage was really killing it when we got to the inch and a half. It was getting deeper into the wood than the power detect. Here, with this auger bit, which is 7 8 inch, the power detect seems to be taking it better than the flex volt advantage. So it's kind of flip flopping back and forth as to which one is doing better, which could be part of the wood that we're in, could be the force I have on the drill. Either way, let's try this flex volt advantage. We're getting real close to a knot here. Let's just for fun. And if you're not putting any pressure on this self-feed bit, which you shouldn't have to, this wood is gumming some of it up. So I am pushing through it. There's having zero issue with it. I'll tell you, I, the larger the bit we go through, the more the flexible advantage seems to grab and go in. Um, but the smaller bits, sometimes we seem to get less interruptions and uh, timeouts through the power detect. So I, I don't feel that we've gotten any definitive results that say one's better than the other. So I have a one inch bore on here. We are going to do the same thing on the flex volt advantage, two bars on the five amp hour battery. Let's try this out, see where we get. So I'm letting the screw do everything on this. And we had a cutout on the first hole and we drilled the last three to the point of breakthrough. Let's put this on the power detect. So no cutouts with this guy. It's interesting. I'm going to drill three more down here. Same drill. Now this crack split open on the last one. Not that that matters. Let's see if we get the same consistency with the flex volt advantage. I'm going to tell you, if this doesn't sound like it's got the same amount of power, but we are at, we're at one bar. Try out a new battery. 
All right, fresh battery, fully charged, flex volt advantage. Let's see what happens here. I tell you, it didn't change a whole lot, did it? Coming up again. Switch back over. That last hole, I was pushing quite hard. I might be wrong here. Well guys, for anyone who called me out in the last video and said, hey, you know, there was a lot of flex in that wood and I don't know that you could really say that the five amp hour performed that much better in the flex volt advantage due to the flex and the different knots in the wood grain and such and such. I think you might be right. Uh, realistically, both of these tools performed excellent with the different situations they were put in. And when one performed better than the other, it seemed like it could have been the wood or it could have been some other part. And realistically, on that last test with the uh, one inch self feeding bit, it really sounded like the power detect had more power. So, Unless we get into a lab situation, we're not going to be able to tell the difference between these two as far as their use. I'm trying to stay in high gear instead of going down to low, just simply because it seems that we can take out a lot of the variables of the big bits in the different amount of grain. So realistically, the proof's here in the pudding. These two drills are insanely powerful. If you're looking for something out there that's great, uh, go with them. I'm gonna retract my statement that the Flexible Advantage took more power out of the lower amp hour batteries. If you're using either one of these with a five amp hour drill, we're gonna call it the same results as we did with the Flex Volt against the eight amp hour. They're the same. Dang the same. The only difference that you see out of this is obviously the FlexVolt Advantage has more power with the FlexVolt battery, where the Power Detect does not have more power with the FlexVolt battery, but the FlexVolt Advantage with a 9 amp hour FlexVolt battery had the same power as the Power Detect with the 8 amp hour battery. I was wrong on that portion. Sorry. That shit happens, I guess, and uh, I will always say that I was wrong. That's not the first time, and it won't be the last. But I do appreciate you guys watching the videos. I I'm going to still try to find more things out. We still have the, uh, the next reciprocating saw coming up. I'm still letting my finger heal a little bit more before we get into that amount of vibration. But I think the reality is on that one, and this is my preconceived notion if you're interested in what I'm thinking prior to even picking it up, is that if you're gonna get a reciprocating saw and you're gonna be in the flex volt line, why wouldn't you just go with the flex volt one that we know has more power? If you're in the power detect line or the flex volt advantage line, I think that uh, either way we looked at it down the road, they're both about the same in the end. So, tough call. Sorry about that one, guys. Appreciate it. Beat me up in the comments. I'm ready for it. I deserve it. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.